everybody. This is Beth from the Oakland New Market Library. I also work as a naturalist at a place called the Nye Nature Center. And I get there to teach people a lot of things about plants and animals and all the other things you'll find outside. So today, I'm going to spend some time talking to you about one of my favorite kinds of critters. And that is butterflies, just like this one. This one is called a red admiral butterfly. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is the butterfly life cycle. They have some really crazy and cool and strange things that happen to them during their life cycle. So I'm going to use this mobile that I made, which is something you can also make yourself, to talk to you a little bit about that. So we'll have a grown-up butterfly, like this one, or like our red admiral, and they will find a leaf or some other protected area, just like this, and they will lay their eggs. So their eggs might be laid in a clump like this, so you'll see lots of eggs. Sometimes different kinds of butterflies will lay eggs, maybe just one or two at a time but you'll almost always find them in a protected place like the underside of a leaf. So after a while, those eggs will hatch and the first thing that will come out is a very tiny little caterpillar, which is the baby or the larvae of the butterfly. And they might look like this one right here. Now they grow and get bigger as they eat they like to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. And when they get bigger, they'll start to stretch their skin. And pretty soon their skin won't stretch anymore. And they have to break out of their skin. But they'll just be another caterpillar. Just a little bit bigger than the first one, like this. They might do that several times. And they might be a really big caterpillar, like this one right here. Then, after a while, sometimes a few weeks, sometimes even a couple of months, that caterpillar will find another protected spot, just like its mom tried to find a protected spot for her eggs. And they'll attach themselves maybe to the underside of a leaf or the underside of a branch, and they'll curl up in a J shape just like that. And they'll break out of their skin one more time. But this time, they don't come out as a caterpillar. They come out as something called a chrysalis. And that chrysalis is also called a pupa. Now it might look bright and shiny like that one there, or it might look kind of lumpy and bumpy kind of not very brightly colored like this one. And inside that chrysalis, there's a lot of changes going on. The butterfly, the caterpillar's body, basically kind of breaks down into almost something like soup. Isn't that crazy? And it starts to mix back together again. And after a while, again, it might be a few weeks, it might be even a couple of months, depending on what kind of butterfly it is. All of a sudden, that chrysalis will break open and out will come a butterfly. Might look like this one. Might look like our red admiral. It might look at this like this one, or it might look at any, like any of the other thousands of kinds of butterflies that you might see. So that's the life cycle of the butterfly. So I have a few other fun facts to share about butterflies. One of them has to do with butterfly eyes. Now you and I have eyes that each have one lens. And that's the part of the eye that looks out onto the world, like the lens in a camera or binoculars. But insects, like butterflies, have eyes that have many different lenses in. Now you can imagine that this ball is the eye of a butterfly and all of these facets are the lenses. So if my hand was the part where an eye would fit into the head of a butterfly, and you put the eye in there, 
can look at all the different directions that a butterfly could look out onto the world because it can look out through each one of those different lenses. Isn't that cool? I have one more thing that I want to show you about butterflies and the cool features that they have. Now I want to remind you that one thing about this is you need to make sure, first of all, that your hands are clean. Mine are clean, I promise. Then I'm going to open the package so that you'll know that I haven't touched any of these before. Because this is something that you can put in your mouth. So you'll want to figure out how you want to do that to make sure that everybody stays safe. The thing that I want to talk about is the really, really cool mouth that you'll find on a butterfly. Now you and I would take our hands and we'll pick up our food, maybe with a fork, maybe with our bare fingers, and we'll put it in our mouth. But butterflies don't have hands that they can use to do that. But they do have a really, really cool mouth. It's called a proboscis. I know that's a really strange name. But it's coiled up in front of their face, kind of the way that this party blower is curled up. So they don't have to blow like I do in the party blower. They'll just think about it and they'll stretch out their mouth. And then they can use that to reach into a flower or maybe a piece of really ripe, juicy fruit. And they'll use that like a straw to suck up their food because they do eat liquid food. So that's the mouth on a butterfly. It's really cool. So the last thing that I want to show you about butterflies is how you can make this really cool butterfly life cycle mobile. So what I did with this one is I actually just took a scissors and freehand cut the spiral. But you can also take a pen or a pencil and draw the spiral. Just cut it out very quickly, like I am doing right now. One of the things that drawing the spiral on does is it makes your curves a little more even. It also gives you a few more really nice curves, more than what I have on that one right there. The other thing you want to do is if you want color and design on your mobile, you need to color the paper plate before you cut it out. So what you can do now is take a paper punch and just punch the top for your string to hang it on and then decide where along the spiral you want to have all of your pictures for your life cycle mobile. Punch those places and hang it up and you're all set. So I hope you get lots of opportunities this summer to go out and look for butterflies. You might find them flying around some fields of flowers or even around the grass and trees in your own backyard. If you want to find out more about butterflies, you can check out the links and the other resources like books that we've included with this video.